Welcome back. In the last video we talked about um, why we need to get rid of waste products and um, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the actual organs that help us get rid of those uh, waste products. So the dot point says identify the role of kidneys in the excretory system of fish and mammals. So what I have here is obviously this is a human so that's a mammal right here but um, he has his kidneys here so these are these two bean shaped things are this that's his kidney and to his kidneys you have a tube connected to the bladder so this part down here is your bladder so obviously the kidney uh, will produce urine urine and so most of our urea and some of our water will be removed through urine so that's how kidneys help remove waste products is through the urine itself so the urine is made by the kidneys so I went for over this just before so excretory system that word excretory refers to removing right so the excrete and um, removal system of fish and mammals. So first I'll go over nitrogenous waste because nitrogenous waste is removed has to be removed by both mammals and fish. Um, so mammals get rid of their nitrogenous waste in the form of urea through the kidneys. So right here we've got the kidneys. So yes, mammals do get do um, so one of the roles of for the mammals in terms of the kidney is to remove nitrogenous waste. For mammals, that's correct. But for fish, um, fish get rid of nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia via the gills. So the gills, not the kidney. So for fish, um, fish do not use the kidneys to get rid of nitrogenous waste. They can they can use it. They can remove it for their gills. And the reason why we um, can't remove it for the gills is because we don't have any gills and we don't have any water and we don't live in a watery environment as well so we need to use a kidney to get rid, of, get rid of nitrogenous waste in the form of urea so that's only for mammals so we remove nitrogenous waste in mammals but not in fish fish don't use their kidneys to do it. they use their gills and the second part was um, for water and salt balance so mammals um, kidneys are used to balance water and salts right so as a tick for this so mammals do use their kidneys to remove salts and water if, if they have too much and if you have dilute urine that removes excess water and the reason why I did that in white so why I wrote dilute urine in white is because dilute refers to uh, there not being too much uh, of in this case of urea compared to water so it has a lot more water so if you have dilute urine your urine will actually be white that's because there's so much water in there and the reason why we have dilute urine is because we might have drunk too much water and we have to get rid of that excess water because remember too much water too little water can be bad so by having by producing dilute urine if we have drunk too much water that means we're removing our excess we're removing the amounts that are too much and that's why it's white because white is just stands for water itself being removed now on the opposite side if it's concentrated um that means it's usually the yellow orangey color and concentrated refers to there being in it conserving water so not much water is lost a bit of water will be lost but it's mostly urea so most of that um, orangey color comes from urea and that's why our urine is orange when it's um, when we're dehydrated because we're only removing urea and only we're most removing urea and only removing a small amount of water so we've got concentrated urine if we're dehydrated and dilated urine if we've drunk in too much. So for, but for fish, fish use the kidneys to maintain water and salt balance. That's also correct. So the role of kidneys for the fish is also to remove too much to balance the salts and water levels. That's correct. But we have two scenarios. We either have a salt or a freshwater fish. Um, so freshwater fish, these are the fish that might be in a sea or in a lake. And if you think about it, freshwater, freshwater means that you obviously have less salt. So these brown dots are the salt. And because freshwater means that you have little salt, so you have maybe one, and this is just an example, you might have one molecule of salt in the freshwater, whereas you have three molecules of salt in the actual fish. So we talked about um, last a couple of videos back, and um, this would be a hypotonic solution, right? So this is a hypotonic solution. So we have less, so hypo, hypo means um, little or less. So hypotonic solution means we have less solu um, solute 
in the solution compared to fish. So if you think about it, if you think about osmosis again, stuff traveling from low solid to high solid concentration. What does that mean for the water? What where does the water travel? So in this case, it will actually travel from the water. So this white would be the water here. It will travel from the water into the fish. So if the if the actual fish had no way to regulate its water levels, what would happen to fish? It would get more and more water for the gills, and it would increase in size, and like it would increase in size um, as we go, and then all of a sudden it would be having so much water that it would burst. So obviously fishes don't usually burst. And the reason why is because their kidneys help them to regulate their their water levels. So in this case, because of a hypotonic solution, means we have too much water in a fish. But what it does, it produces large amounts of urine. So I'm going to underline that in red, actually. Here, large amounts of urine. To get rid of all that water again, that water that it's absorbing. So that's number one. So it has to get rid of all that water. So it produces a large amount of dilute urine, which means it's purely water, almost. And it doesn't drink much. Obviously, it doesn't want to drink because if it drinks, it's just going to drink even more water, and it has enough water as it is. So that's for freshwater fish. For saltwater fish, again, you can imagine this one has maybe three molecules of salt inside, whereas it might have 10 plus outside because the salt water is much more salty. The water itself is much more salty than the fish. So osmosis is from a low solid to high solid concentration. So what way would the actual water go? So in this case, it goes from low to high, so from the fish out into the water. So that's what happens, right? So we have water traveling out. And the problem is if there's no way to regulate the water levels, obviously that would mean um, you would have a shriveled up fish. So the fish would die because it shrivels up. And obviously that happen, doesn't happen usually as well for saltwater fish. They do survive. They don't shrivel up. And the reason why is because they have, they have two other mechanisms. So they have the opposite happening. Um, the freshwater fish was not drinking because it was having so much water in, in its body already. Whereas the saltwater fish constantly drinks. And that happens to make sure that it gets enough water into the system because it keeps losing water to the environment. And the other part was that it produces small amounts of urine, so it's very concentrated urine. And the reason why it doesn't want to get doesn't want to lose um, more water. There's no reason why it should be producing dilute urine because it wants to conserve water. So it will produce small amounts of urine, and it will constantly drink. So in those two adaptions help it to maintain a constant internal environment even though it's losing water to the environment, to the, um, to the ocean, because the ocean is more salty than the fish. Right, so to recap that, for nitrogenous waste, so the role of kidneys in the excretory system of fish and mammals, the role of kidneys in mammals is both to, so it's to remove nitrogenous waste and to balance our salts and water levels, whereas the role of, for fish is not to remove um, nitrogenous waste, because that's for the gills, not for the kidneys, but it is to balance salt and water levels. And then we've got uh, two scenarios. We either have the freshwater fish, which produce a large amount of dilute urine and rarely drinks. And those two mechanisms help it cope with a hypotonic solution. And saltwater fish produces small amounts of concentrated urine, but it constantly drinks. And those two adaptions help it cope with a hypo, hypertonic. So the solution has more salt than the fish, a hypertonic solution. Right, so hopefully that made sense.